Timor-Leste, the world's newest nation, started from zero. Amongst the rubble and destruction left by the Indonesian military and militias following the vote of independence in 1999, people were rebuilding their lives. One of them was Leandro Bello, whose three-week-old niece was very sick. She had a high fever, vomiting and diarrhea. The irony was that Atisha and her mother live next to a hospital, but it did not take East Timorese patients. If the producer hadn't paid for a taxi to the Red Cross Hospital on the other side of town, Atisha would have died. She is now three years old. Children like Atisha should not have to go without an education. Because Timor-Leste has potentially billions of dollars worth of oil. But Australia doesn't recognise East Timor's maritime boundaries. The international law, according to the UNCLOS, the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, stipulates that when two countries lie you know, 250 miles within the exclusive zone, then you have to draw the median line. The main argument that is now taking place is in the oil field of uh, Sunrise and Greater Troubadour. That is a grey area between the two countries, but Australia is arguing using the continental shelf, whereas East Timor is proposing this so-called argument of equidistance, a median line. Now, the, the, the other interesting development is that Australia has made some commitments with at least four or five multinational oil companies in the region, and they all are now waiting to explore the, the, the gas field. At the same time, Australia claims itself that this is within our jurisdictions, therefore we explore and nobody else can tell us what to do. Therefore, Timor-Leste is claiming that it's losing one million dollars per day uh, in the hands of Australia's exploration, unilaterally. Yeah. The other point is that Australia should also uh, temporarily stop exploring the, uh, the current disputed area particularly in the Sunrise and Gas and Troubadour area, uh, until a permanent maritime border is finalised. Otherwise, Australia is being claimed as uh, st stealing the oil and gas resources from the Timor Sea, which is claimed to be under the jurisdiction. Inspired by Nobel Prize laureate Bishop Bello, and a new society in peace, reconciliation and forgiveness, Sister Josephine Mitchell and other sisters of the Mary MacKillop Institute of East Timorese Studies carry out literacy programs in the indigenous languages of East Timor. They rebuild schools and conduct health projects, including mobile clinics for remote areas. Education is the key, really, to the future of East Timor. So a huge percentage of the Timorese population are illiterate, some say up to 80%. So that's our hope that we'll promote our literacy in the first language, in the first language of the child, which in most cases is Tetum. So um, the sisters have been working in about 70 schools and we've put books into the hands of teachers and children. Um, it's an absolute delight to see children reading, teachers being able to use resources, where the other side of it is the children are very poor, 
very hungry and very often very sick. 9% of children die before they're one and the 30-40% before they're five. Like it's it's appalling. It's absolutely appalling. It's starvation in little children. It's hunger in children. Like where does it add up? And in between there's the great rich oil fields of the Timor Sea. And if the boundaries were drawn <clears throat> correctly, if the boundaries were drawn according to international law, to be honest, most of it would be in Timorese waters. So most of it really, the greatest share of it would be with Timor, not with Australia. It's another David and Goliath battle. Timor-Leste's President Janana Gushmao recently said that for children like Atisha to have a future, it is a question of life and death, to beg or to be self-sufficient.